I am haunted by patterns. These dress patterns have haunted me since childhood, but I have never found a fitting fabric for such a frock until now, for recently I came across this fabric that truly inspired me. I found this bedsheet and thrift store at the pillowcase. That's not right. I found this bedsheet and pillowcase at the thrift store. I was immediately drawn to it because it reminded me of the greatest description of a dress in cinematic history. Nice dress. Looks like wallpaper. I mean, good wallpaper. Out of the two patterns, this was the chosen one. Now, if you're wondering how wallpaper can be good or bad. Exhibit A, bad wallpaper. Exhibit B, good wallpaper. This looks like something you would find in a doctor's office. This looks like something you would find in not a doctor's office. I set to work destroying, the, I mean, uh, um, uh, ripping the seams of the sheet and the pillowcase, and then I pressed all the pieces flat. Here are the results. So, slight hiccup, kerfuffle, problem, etc. I did not realize this is a size 6. So, very different, in fact, from my own size. So, I am going to have to attempt to copy this pattern and make it a different size. So here are the pieces that I will be working with. It is the next day. Last night I cut the pattern out of this fabric and stitched it all together, tried it on, and realized I still have a few adjustments to make to the pattern. Not too many, so that's good. I don't know if you've ever had this problem before, but just in case you have, so if you've got your ring light plugged in, but it just won't stay plugged in so it keeps turning off, here's what you can do. Take an undershirt. Stick it in between your bookshelf and your outlet. I decided to use interlining instead of using fusible interfacing because, well, I didn't have any fusible interfacing, but also it can sometimes make a bodice look too stiff for my liking. So I used some fabric scraps left over from this dress, actually. I inserted all the darts on all the pieces of both bodices, fabric and lining. Since they were large front darts, I gave them a little trim, like I'm considering doing for my bangs. And then it was time to sew the side seams together. I cut out the skirt pieces and stitched them together using French seams. Oops. I completely forgot about a vital, yes, vital piece of this fabric puzzle. Quick, comment what it was that I forgot to add. If you are a dress wearer, then you know. Oh, you know. Anyway, all that work I did had to be undone later. Sigh. After that, it was time for bed. My manager said so. The next day, I finished the skirt seams that I would later have to undo. I decided to put boning in just the side seams. Then it was time to make ruffles. Not those kind of ruffles. These kind, that I forgot to include in the pattern pieces shot earlier. I finished the ruffle edges with teeny tiny hems, attached them to the top of the sleeves, and then attached a strip of bias tape, concealing the raw edge and also creating a channel for elastic. I finished the sleeve edge with a simple hem, and about an inch above the hem I added another strip of bias tape as another elastic channel. Then it was time to take Casey Jr. out for a spin and send the elastic through all of the channels. I did not expect the sleeves to turn out so well. But look at the puffiness. Look at the puffs. I then attach those puffs to the underarms of the bodice. I have an issue with certain necklines sometimes, especially heart-shaped necklines, where they just kind of stick up. They don't curve gently in. They stick up straight. What I like to do is ease it. Ease it. Ease it. I took the two bodice pieces, floral and lining, and joined them together at the top edge, being sure to keep the sleeves in between the layers. So I do want to line the skirt with a lightweight lining, but I don't want it to be the same exact pattern as the skirt. I don't want it to have as much gather because then it'll just cause it to be bulky. So I'm going to do more of a um, A-line sort of shape, but I don't have enough fabric to do that. I mean, I do, but I don't. So 
essentially I'm going to use all of my scraps that I used for the bodice lining and I'm going to patchwork them together so as to not waste fabric. So that's what I'm going to do. You've probably already guessed it. Yep, I forgot to add pockets. So I cut out the sort of bean shapes that I always do for pockets every time. I wish I would remember to cut them out a little wider and not quite so deep. But oh well. To attach pockets, place them right sides together with the skirt panels and stitch. Then, if the queen visits you and steals your seat, don't try to get it back. That's her seat now and forever. Take the two skirt panels complete with beans and sandwich them right sides together and stitch along the new shape. I basted together all the raw edges of the bodice. Normally I like to be much more neat and tidy about finishing the insides, but I was running out of time. It's been a day. Um, I really want to power through and finish this, but I need to find a stopping point, and I think I just found it. All I have left to do is attach the skirt to the bodice, and then attach the lining skirt also to the bodice. Hem it and zipper it and then it will be completely complete. Which makes me really just wanna go ahead and do those steps, but um, I know I need to find a stopping point and uh, call it a night. So that's what I'm gonna do and I will attack it tomorrow. This pattern has been working out wonderfully. I really love it. However, I have one concern here. So in the front, of course, it goes down to a little bit of a point. So the skirt has that. However, in the back, nothing. In the back, it's, it's just straight. Instead of dipping down like the front, because in the bodice, of course, point, right? But the back, tell me why. Tell me why. This goes to a point in the back, which is, is, it is shown here on the pattern. The back has a slight point. Yep. Dips down a little bit there. Sure, dips down to a slight point. But the, but the skirt back doesn't make up for that. It, it doesn't dip down. So I'm just going to go ahead and start pinning it together and then see what happens. But I think for some reason, I'm going to have to insert a little bit of a dip here. I do not know what happened there. But I just, I cut out the top of the skirt pattern as normal. I did not alter that. Then up. Let's just keep going. Yeah, I should have trusted myself and created the diff instead of trusting the pattern. Oh well, I fixed it. After that, it was time for the hem. I ran a basting stitch across the bottom of the skirt so I could just use that as a pressing guide instead of measuring it, marking it with chalk, measuring it, marking it with chalk. It seems to go faster, I'm not sure if it does. And then I just turned it under, pressed it, and then turned it under again and then stitched it into place. I decided to go ahead and turn it under one more time to make a nice chunky hem. And the dress was complete.
Okay, I do not remember filming that reveal. And I found my dress and my shoes in the barn. Weird things are happening around here.